pairing. And once I'm finished with that, and I think it, I, I can get through my slides in about 20 minutes, um, I can give you a brief demo of Alma resource sharing. So you can actually see what requesting looks like from you know the user submitting the request all the way through to the request being completed. Um, so feel free to stop me at any point if you have any questions. Um, and uh, thanks for inviting me here today. So um, let me just rearrange some of the Zoom stuff here. So traditionally, SUNY has used ILLiad and OCLC for both physical and digital resource sharing. Also, since I believe the mid 2000s, all SUNY campuses had been using an ex libris ILS called Olive. Um, that was 60 individual instances of Olive that were not connected in any way. So you had all of SUNY using the same ILS software but that software could not talk to each other from campus to campus. That all changed in the summer of 2019 when SUNY implemented a shared instance of Alma and Primo V um, for all 60 SUNY campuses. Um, and just to be clear, Alma is the back end ILS that is used by staff. Primo V is the front end discovery layer that is used by users. Um, and in our Alma configuration, we have individual institution zones that are all connected to a central network zone. And that means we're actually not using individual bibliographic records at each campus. We have shared bibliographic records stored in the network zone, and then individual campuses attach holdings to those records. And one of the things that this move to a shared instance of Aleph with a central network zone and shared bibliographic records allowed us to do was to implement resource sharing within Alma. Um, we did implement physical resource sharing for all SUNY campuses at Alma Go Live in the summer of 2019. Um, at the time, we only implemented resource sharing for physical items. Um, we didn't believe that Alma's digital resource sharing functionality quite met our needs. Plus, at the time, nearly every single SUNY campus was using Iliad. Um, Iliad digital resource sharing was, and to a lesser degree now, still is superior to Alma. So we decided to keep all of our digital resource sharing in Iliad and OCLC, and then do the physical stuff in Alma. Now, this kind of changed when the pandemic hit, and we we realized that um, you know budget situations at our campuses were about to go from bad to worse. Um, so, in the spring of 2020, we did implement digital resource sharing in Alma for libraries who felt the need to move away from Iliad and or OCLC for um, cost reasons. And that's that's um, something I'll, I'll be touching on several times during this presentation. Um, unfortunately, you know, Iliad and OCLC in many ways have served us well for many years, but unfortunately for a lot of our libraries, it's just no longer cost effective. Um, when you look at the number of requests being processed, and then compare that to you know, the Iliad subscription fee, the Iliad hosting fee, the WorldShare ILL subscription, and then on top of that for many libraries, an IDS project membership. Once you add up all of those costs and then start looking at Iliad at a cost per transaction level, the numbers really aren't very pretty. Um, whereas on the other hand, Alma resource sharing is free for Alma library. We're just using basic Alma functionality. There's no added cost. So um, we, we have really um, expanded what we're doing with Alma resource sharing with the goal of giving libraries an alternative 
to Alma, or, or excuse me, to Iliad in OCLC. So how have things been going for us so far? Um, over the past four years, um, Alma has become our primary pl resource sharing platform for physical requests. Um, last year, um, fiscal year 2022, we filled approximately 18,000 requests throughout the SUNY system, which represents about 75% of all of the physical resource sharing that happens within SUNY. So um, we've taken it from being 100% Iliad and OCLC to being 75% Alma. And one thing we've also noticed is that um, we're seeing significantly better turnaround times in Alma than we are in Iliad. Um, the numbers I'm showing here um, are samples from the University at Buffalo for the fall of 2022. Um, I do have access to a lot of Alma turnaround time data. Um, my access to Iliad turnaround time data is limited. Um, fortunately, I do have full access to Buffalo's Iliad, so I can easily pull these numbers. But I have um, taken a look at numbers at others, a handful of other SUNY campuses over the last few years. And this, this trend, you know, you know, this has been true at every library I look at. Um, we see significantly better turnaround times in Alma than we do in Iliad. Like at Buffalo, it's a difference of, you know, 6.3 days to 9.9 .9 days. That's nearly a four day difference. Um, and the big reason why we're seeing such better turnaround times in Alma than we are in Iliad is that Alma borrowing and lending is a lot less labor intensive than Iliad. Um, on the borrowing side, there's really not a lot of work at all that library staff need to do. When a request is submitted from Primo, what Alma will do is it will aut automatically query every library in our network, determine which libraries are capable of filling that request. So it's checking not just does your library own the item, is it on the shelf? And does the policy allow it to be requested? And only if all three of those things are true, will Alma send a request to another library. Um, so there's no instances or relatively few instances of Alma sending a request to a library where it can't fill it. So the request is automatically going to a library that can fill it um, within minutes of the user submitting the request. And then on the lending end, um, Alma, when a request is received, it automatically attaches the request to an item record. And then that item record appears on your pick from shelf list. Um, so there's no like manual lookup of call numbers or locations. Um, like I said, a lot of this is automated. Um, I'm not going to claim that the automation is perfect. It does occasionally make mistakes, but in my experience, this the automated locate process that Alma uses to determine who can and can't fill a request is 99% accurate. Um, it hasn't, like the automation hasn't created a lot of significant issues for us. Um, another unrelated nice thing about Alma resource sharing for physical items is um, the way loan periods work are a little different in Alma as they are in OCLC. And that requires libraries to make agreements about loan periods before um, engaging in Alma resource sharing. So within the SUNY system, we have implemented a system-wide 16-week loan period um, for the vast majority of our loans. We do allow a shorter 30-day loan period for what we refer to as protective collections. So um, rare items, new items, media can sometimes get that shorter loan period. But generally speaking, when a user um, borrows something in Alma, they know they're going to get a 16-week loan period, um, which is different than OCLC, where you know loan periods can be all over the place. And now, as far as digital resource sharing goes, um, 
it's only been implemented at a portion of the SUNY system. Um, last year, we filled 2,100 requests, um, and we had an 84% fill rate. Um, so most of the requests that were generated within the system could be filled by a SUNY library. And as far as turnaround time goes, um, comparing fall 2022 data for the whole SUNY system to Buffalo's Iliad turnaround time for articles, um, Alma's again actually been a little bit faster. On average, all the article requests were filled in uh, 0 0.9 days, whereas at Buffalo on the Iliad side of things, it took an average of 1.2 days. And I, I should note that Buffalo, um, is one of the most heavily automated libraries for Iliad request processing in the SUNY system. So I would imagine their article turnaround time is actually on average better than most SUNY libraries. So at other SUNY libraries, that gap between Alma and Iliad is probably greater. So um, once we were able to determine that Alma digital resource sharing really is a viable option for many of our smaller campuses, um, 15 of those campuses, mostly community colleges, wound up dropping Iliad and adopting Alma Digital Resource Sharing. Um, the vast majority of those libraries are still um, subscribed to WorldShare ILL. So what they're doing with unfilled requests, um, they're exporting those directly to WorldShare. And as far as their OCLC lending goes, um, they're processing those requests directly in WorldShare. And um, you know that is you know clearly a less efficient thing to do than to process requests in Iliad, but given the number of requests that these libraries are filling, um, the added expense of Iliad just doesn't make sense for them. Um, it's better for them to save the money on the Iliad subscription and spend a little more time um, manually processing requests in WorldShare. Now, that's not to say that um, Alma digital resource sharing um, is equally as good as Iliad resource sharing. It's not. Um, the big issue with Alma digital resource sharing is there's not much in the way of copyright compliance functionality. Um, so in Iliad, um, Iliad can count requests against the rule of five. Um, you can use Iliad to manage um, copyright payment fees to the Copyright Clearance Center. You can use Iliad to order articles from Reprints Desk or Get It Now. Um, so for libraries that um, process a high volume of article borrowing requests and um, routinely exceed the CONTU rule of five, Iliad is still your best option. But that's not the case at um, a lot of our smaller libraries, their, their article borrowing volumes are low enough that the rule of five doesn't come into play all that often. So um, for smaller libraries with lower article borrowing volumes, um, Alma does make sense for them and it can work for them. Um, and Alma can um, check requests against the rule of five. Unfortunately, when a request is flagged as being over copyright, you have to go out to some sort of external system to actually manage the rights payment. You can't do that internally in the same way you can in Iliad. Um, I don't want to paint too rosy of a picture here. Um, Alma resource sharing um, does have its flaws. Um, I should point out that Alma's automated locate process, um, which in many, many ways is incredibly helpful reduces a lot of work and ultimately leads to better turnaround times. It doesn't handle um, patron prov provided metadata very well. Um, so what we've done is at all of our campuses, we've suppressed the blank resource sharing request form. So all requests are generated from discovery search results. So a user searches for an item, they find a record for that item, and then they submit a request. Um, a lot of libraries are using um, Primo as their link resolver. So if, for instance, you're in WorldCat and you find an item you want, the request link will take you into Primo, 
if there is a record for that item in our network zone, um, Primo will automatically match your request to that record, and then you can use regular Alma resource sharing. If there is no match, Alma will use the metadata coming in from the link resolver to automatically generate a temporary Primo record that you can then use to submit an Alma resource sharing request. Um, but what we're, one thing we're not doing is um, giving users the option to just fill in a blank request form. Um, because like I said, the automated locate process just doesn't really work all that well um, unless the metadata is you know, really good and solid. And, and I'm sure we all know that users don't always provide the best metadata for their requests. Um, also, Alma's workflows, I mean, they're really straightforward and they're highly, highly automated but they're not very customizable or flexible. Um, as far as like being able to create like custom queues and have um, customized manual request processes like you can in Iliad, that's not really something you can do in Alma. Um, the workflow is what it is. It's also very unforgiving of user error. Like if you accidentally update a request to shipped or returned, you can't undo that. And um, I often need to end up, you know, four campuses completely recreating the request from scratch, um, which is pretty annoying. Um, fortunately, it doesn't happen all that much, but um, I really do wish Alma was a little more forgiving of user error and could allow you to undo things that you've done by mistakes. And um, lastly, I, I also want to point out, um, I know at least a few of you here on the call are very well aware of this. Um, Alma isn't great about handling multi-volume requests. It's tough to tell if a request is a multi-volume request. Um, and as a result, if a user is requesting specific volumes from a multi-volume set, sometimes they don't get the correct volume. Um, I've submitted a lot of tickets to Ex Libris of trying to get them to improve the situation. Unfortunately, I, I haven't had much luck yet. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, multi-volume requests are a bit of a pain. Another issue that we ran into when we, official, when we initially went live was that our fill rates for physical requests within Alma were a lot lower than we thought they would be. Oh, I'm sorry, I see there's something in the chat. Um, Angela asked, is Rapido any better when it comes to undoing those user errors like accidentally shipping or completing requests? Um, I don't believe so. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with Rapido, um, Rapido is a new Ex Libris resource sharing product that sits atop of Alma. Um, it does have some added functionality. Um, but I can't speak to it too much because there is an added cost for using Rapido and no SUNY library has subscribed. So I've, my exposure to Rapido has been very limited, but I, to the best of my knowledge, um, you can't undo mistakes in Rapido any easier than you can in Alma. Um, and Sine asked, I had a question about why so many requests are coming through as ebooks rather than print books. Um, is there anything we can do to make this more obvious to the patrons so that the correct ISBN and record is requested? Um, actually, could you please send me an email about this? I think this is too difficult of an issue to work through right now. Um, but if you could reach out to me after the session, uh, I'd be happy to talk about this with you more. And I'll put my email in the chat in case you need it. So as I was saying, um, initially when we went live with Alma resource sharing, our fill rates were a lot lower than we thought they would be. They were only about 55 to 60%, which means we were exporting nearly half of our requests to Iliad. Um, <clears throat> it is possible to do that. 
Um, and in fact, since going live, the you know the Iliad export feature has been improved significantly. Um, and it's an, it's an incredibly helpful integration to have, but it is still somewhat clunky and confusing for occasionally staff and often users. Um, so a lot of our libraries have come to the conclusion that it's better for both users and library staff to fill as many requests in Alma as we can. So to address those low fill rates, um, what we wound up doing was reaching out to other Alma libraries to start expanding our Alma resource sharing network. And we've managed to um, establish a good number of relationships over the past few years. Um, within New York State, we're doing Alma resource sharing with Ithaca College, Nazareth College, Canisius College. Um, we're also in the process of talking with Connect New York about um, doing Alma resource sharing with some of their libraries. Um, outside of New York State, um, we're working with Brandeis University, which is in the Boston area. Um, the WRLC consortium, that's the Washington Research Library Consortium in the Washington DC area. Um, the Connecticut State Colleges and Universities, um, the California State University System. Um, we've also started working with a couple of universities in Pennsylvania. Um, we're working with the University of Central Florida. And actually just yesterday, um, we started working with uh, Hamline University in St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, which is part of the MinPals system. Um, so I'm hoping that relationship with Hamline can eventually lead to a larger relationship uh, with MinPals. Um, I'm hoping the same thing for the University of Central Florida, because um, they're part of a 40 library consortia that uses Alma resource sharing. And I'm hoping eventually we'll be able to do more business with the Florida libraries as well. And so far, things are going uh, pretty well with all of this. We've got our physical fill rates are now, um, we're starting to exceed 70% for those. And I do calculate that number and share it out to everyone in SUNY on a monthly basis. And I've been happy to see that we're finally, we finally seem to have crossed that 70% threshold. <clears throat> um, obviously we would like to do more. Um, so we're always looking for more partners and our long-term goal is to create a resource sharing network in Alma that is a viable alternative to Iliad and OCLC. Because um, like I said earlier, Iliad and OCLC, I'm afraid simply just aren't cost effective for a lot of SUNY libraries now. Um, whereas, you know, we can do everything we're doing in Alma at no added cost at all. And given, you know, budget situations, um, you know, we're trying to do everything we can to save libraries money. And this is one of the areas where we're really focusing on, on, you know, making resource sharing more financially efficient for our campuses. Uh, one last thing I want to talk about before I go into the demo portion. Um, so all of the resource sharing I was just talking about was Alma to Alma. But we've recently started working with St. John Fisher University. Um, they're no longer St. John Fisher College. On sending requests directly from our Alma to their Iliad. And we can do that via the ISO protocol. And that allows us to bypass WorldShare ILL entirely. So an Alma library that doesn't subscribe to any OCLC resource sharing products can send a request to a library using Iliad. Um, things have been going very well so far. Um, I've been very happy, like St. John Fisher's, like, you know, they've always been a really great partner for us and, you know, they're continuing to be a great partner um, by, you know, working with us on this. Um, we're hoping to expand um, ISO resource sharing from Alma to Iliad with St. John Fisher in the coming months. Um, we're also hoping to start, establish more ISO relationships with libraries. Um, 
one last thing I, I do want to point out, it is possible to also receive requests in Alma from Iliad via ISO, but the workflow is really, really, really inefficient on the Iliad side. So in St. John Fisher's instance, they're still sending requests to us via Iliad, but some of our libraries are now sending requests to their Iliad via Alma. Um, and I'm hoping we can do a lot more of that sort of thing in the future. So that was the end of my presentation. Um, does anyone have any questions before I move on to the demo? All right, it doesn't look like we have any questions. So I'm going to start with the demo and I'm going to start by logging into Primo, which is the discovery layer for Alma at North Country Community College. So I have to log in. So when you're searching Primo, um, there are various search scopes, including a scope for the SUNY catalog. That is the shared repository of bibliographic records in our network zone. So it allows you to see things that are held by other SUNY libraries. So I'm just gonna scroll down here and let's take a look at this book right here. Cause it's saying, um, I'm sorry, actually, let me back up just a little bit. So you're seeing here that some of these items are available at one of North Country Community College's campuses. But if you see check for available services, that means the item is not available. So I'm gonna click through to here. And because the item's not available, I'm seeing this resource sharing request link. So if I click on this, it automatically populates the request form. And now, all I need to do is hit send request. Unfortunately, there can be a bit of a lag here sometime, especially the first time you're submitting a request in Primo. Um, the request did go through. Subsequent requests should go through a lot quicker. So now I'm gonna go into North Country Community College's Alma and I'm gonna take a look at their borrowing requests. And I'm seeing this request is already in here and it's already been sent to Binghamton University. And if I click into the request and go to edit, I can look at the requests rota, which is what Alma calls a lending string. And I can see here that the only library that's capable of filling this request is Binghamton University. So they're the only library in the Rota. But if there were other SUNY libraries that could fill this request, you would see them below Binghamton. And if Binghamton rejected the request, it would automatically move on to the next library in the Rota, um, so on and so forth, until someone is able to fill the request or the request goes unfilled and it needs to be exported to Iliad. So what I'm gonna do now is log in to Binghamton. So I'm gonna take a look at Binghamton's lending requests. And here's the request from North Country Community College. And I just want to quickly see which library has this. So it's at their science library. So if I log into their science library and then go to their pick from shelf list. Oh, where'd it go?
Unfortunately, it looks like I have a roll scoping issue here. So I'm not seeing the picked from shelf list at their library. Um, so I'm going to have to, I first need to get the barcode. Sorry about this, folks. Um, let me just look up the item. Here. Let's do a search for the item. There's that barcode. Um, so under normal circumstances, the, the item would show up on the pick from shelf list. You'd be able to print a pull slip just like you would for like a regular Alma hold. And once you have the item in hand, all you have to do is go to shipping items, scan in the barcode. And because the item is attached to the request, once you scan in the barcode, the request is automatically updated to shipped. And here it's telling me that this item needs to go to North Country Community College. Um, you can also print a shipping slip at this point that has an address label on it. Um, I'm not gonna, I, I don't wanna actually print anything at Binghamton, so I'm not gonna do that. Now let's go back to North Country Community College. If I refresh this request, I can see that it's been shipped physically. So that's how I know it's on its way. And now I can receive the request. Um, and when I receive the request, Alma is going to create a temporary item record that I can then use to circulate that item. Um, that temporary record needs a barcode that you do have to manually input. So I'm going to go ahead and put the item barcode um, from Binghamton. And one of the nice things about this is now that I have the item barcode from Binghamton in my system, I don't really need to worry about the users losing paperwork that have like an ILL number or a transaction number on them. Um, if the barcode from the lending library is in your system, um, and that barcode is attached to a borrowing request, if the user brings the item back without any sort of paperwork, you can just scan in the barcode. It will recognize that the item is attached to a resource sharing request, and it will automatically um, update the request uh, to returned and then print a return slip for you. So users losing paperwork isn't as much of an issue. So I'm going to click go here. And at this point, the item is received and it's placed on hold for me. And then I can check it out just like any other item in Alma. And if I go back to Binghamton's lending requests, I can see that this item has been received. So that's how Binghamton knows that the item actually made its way to North Country Community College. So now let's pretend that the user has checked this item out. They're done using it, they've returned it. So at this point, all I need to do is update the request to returned. So the request is now in the returned item to partner status. Um, again, I don't want to actually print anything at North Country, but under normal circumstances, a return slip would print at this time. That would again have an address label so you know where the item needs to go. And then if I go back to Binghamton and refresh the request here, I can see that the item is the, in the return to partner status. And the request on North Country's side, it's still open. So when I scan in this item on Binghamton's end, and again, all I have to do is scan in the barcode, 
And Alma knows that the barcode is attached to a resource sharing request. So simply scanning in this barcode, it'll reshelve the item, it'll complete the request on Binghamton's end, and then it'll also complete the request on North Country's end. Um, so that is the Alma resource sharing uh, workflow from beginning to end in a nutshell. Does anyone have any questions about any of this? Yeah, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, this is Carrie. Um, I was just wondering, is there, are there reporting functions in here for like, you know, items that have been in transit for too long or something like that, you know, because we know that, yes, a thing can get checked in and, and you know, shipping can be printed and then it goes right back on the shelf and not into the shipping bin. Um, so are there ways for people to check uh, for missing or long-standing yes, transits? You can, yeah, you can run uh, reports on resource sharing, borrowing and lending request in Alma Analytics. So for instance, if you want to monitor for items that were returned by the borrowing library, but somehow didn't get scanned in, so the requests are still open, um, you could create a report that lists all of your lending requests that have been in the return to partner status for more than X number of days. And then you could use that report to do shelf checks to see if any of those items are actually on the shelf. So yeah, uh, generally speaking, there, there are a lot of ways that in Alma Analytics that you can run reports on resource sharing requests. You know, I was also curious if the turnaround time has changed as the network has gotten broader. Um, like, I don't know what your shipping is like within SUNY, but does that well, count? It's, it's been really hard to track trends in turnaround time because the pandemic just screwed up so many things. Um, but generally speaking, you know, expanding our resource sharing network um, has not hurt turnaround times. In fact, when I compare turnaround times at Buffalo um, for items they're borrowing via Alma from out-of-state libraries, they're still getting those um, items quicker than they are from in-state libraries on ELD via Iliad. Um, so you know, Buffalo can get something from Florida via Alma just as quickly as it can from the University of Rochester via Iliad. And that was one of the things I was a little concerned about when we started um, expanding outside the state, that the turnaround times would be too long. But that that hasn't been the case. I've been pleasantly surprised that they're they're pretty in line with what we're seeing within New York State via ELD. Thanks. Yep. Stop sharing. Any questions from anyone else? Um, thank you. That was great, Tim. You're welcome. Helpful. Actually, I do have another question. Sure. I always have a million questions. Um, so how does this, you were talking about Connect New York. Um, I was wondering how this works alongside Connect New York is like, can Connect New York libraries also, who are 